Hi everybody, it's Amy from Savor, Salvage, and Scent. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, which focuses on culinary adventures, um, DIY projects and collecting, and my fragrance obsession. So, continuing a um, series that focuses on things that, or fragrances that stand the test of time. So, obviously, I think Time is testing us right now, so it's nice to be reminded that there are things that endure. So, introducing um, Lair Blue, which is um, the second oldest fragrance in my collection. Um, this was created in 1912 originally by the House of Guerlain, um, which is a French house and perhaps is Gosh, maybe the most famous perfume house. I know um, one of the longest in production um, existing perfume houses. Um, I think it's been existent since 1830, so very, very long time. Um, and Guerlain is really, really famous for um, perfumes that are just classic. So here are a few that you might know from seeing the bottle, seeing on your, your family's um, vanities. So one would be um, Shalimar. So super, super famous, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous perfume that we'll talk about another time. Um, uh, Shalimar Samsara is another one that's um, really, I would say, popular, famous, um, classic. And a lot of um, their bottles over the years were in what they call these bee bottles. So you might be familiar with this. They, they have actually bees all over them. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but really, really gorgeous. And they're also known for their really cool modern scents too that come to mind would be Mon Guerlain, um, which is a really beautiful lavender perfume. I think Angelina Jolie is like the spokes, spokes lady for it. Um, and um, Le Petit uh, Robe Noir, so little black dress. So back to um, Lair Blue, so 1912. Jacques Guerlain, um, who is one of the Guerlain family members, the company was in the Guerlain family from 1830 to I think 1990 when Louis Vuitton's company purchased it. Um, but Jacques Guerlain, I think the third um, Guerlain was designing for them when this uh, perfume was made. So um, they create their noses, they create the perfumes. Um, they're kind of like super genius chemists um, that put together these combinations. So this was created in 1912 and the name is no accident. So Lair Bleu means, I'm terrible at French, but my understanding is it means the blue hour. And what that describes um, and what he was playing with um, was this idea of that beautiful hour between when the sun sets and when it gets dark. So um, this that gorgeous kind of fuzzy, um, I would say kind of romantic hour before it gets really dark. Um, I think it had, you know, many meanings though, because he was really into impressionism and the kind of use of blue and the um, kind of the blues of impressionism and also um, getting into like early, some of early jazz music. So I think the word blue, you know, had many meanings in that way. I also think if you think about history, um, gosh, 1912 is right before World War One, And so if you think about what was pre-war Paris like at that time, I'm sure romantic, but perhaps, you know, like the times before any wars, probably with an understanding that something somber is coming. So I think the name is really, really interesting. Um, the original bottle did not look like this. It actually was this beautiful, I wish I had one, um, gorgeous Baccarat crystal, kind of like a rectangular bottle. And it has, um, which a few popular Guerlain perfumes have like this upside down heart as the topper. Um, and I think it was made by Baccarat crystal, but beautiful. These bottles started to come into play with Guerlain, I think in the 50s, 60s, hope I'm right about that. Um, these, I, I love them. They're like, they're little kind of canisters and you can get um, refills for them. And I just think this is like the sexiest little flask. My God, look at this thing. If you're really bougie, you can actually go to the Guerlain store in Paris and have your name or initials engraved on this baby. So that's what really, really fancy people do. One day I'll talk about going to Guerlain and what that was like. My mind blew and people were doing that stuff. So anyway, this gorgeous bottle. So um, what does this thing smell like? Why would people still buy it 130 years later? 
no, sorry, 110 years later. Math is hard. Um, it, oh my gosh, so interesting, powdery, super powdery. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this thing, spray a little bit on me. Um, oh my gosh, so right out of the sprayer, really interesting, already complex. And I think something that's worth talking about with Guerlain or some of these like fine perfume houses, these people are masters. And like, I think about amazing music. I mean, whether it's like classical or like you think about something like Led Zeppelin or Parliament Funkadelic, like you can sometimes pick out instruments, of course, genius instrumentals and players. But what's amazing is all, how it comes all together too as a composition. And I think what's amazing about Guerlain perfumes is there are so many notes. Like if you look in um, online to see what the notes are, tons. I'm not going to read them all. It's bananas. Um, but, you know, there are a few that come to the forefront, but the, the rest play kind of background. The things that come to the forefront are things that smell powdery and spicy and sweet. So things like carnation, clove. Mm, you get a lot of like warm, spicy softness. Um, but also, um, there's a medicinal quality that some people don't like about this perfume. Um, and it's funk. There's like a funkiness to it. I like funk. And it's, um, how do I say it? Um, well, there's something called benzoin in this. Benzoin is like a syrup or a resin, kind of incense-y. So if you like incense, I, I bet you'll love it. Um, it's sappy, it's medicinal, it's used for everything from, I don't know, mouth sores, the clap for real, um, all kinds of things. But it's got like this medicinal tinge. And um, when Jacques the creator of this perfume was interviewed once, he said that all Guerlain, all the Guerlains that he designed had the essence of the undercarriage of his mistress. So, as you know, a woman's undercarriage is a many splendored thing. So very diverse, lots of layers. Um, and so I think what's interesting about this perfume and part of the reason it stood the test of time is it, um, it just has a lot of layers. It changes over hours of wearing it and it's atmospheric. It, I would imagine, feels like what 1912 would feel like pre-war Paris. Melancholy, beautiful, romantic at the same time, really interesting. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things that I think is really worth exploring in, in Guerlain is they, what, what's so interesting, I would say about not only Guerlain, but any amazing perfume houses, they have this DNA in all of their perfumes. And so, and they actually call it Guerlainade. And kind of what they mean is by DNA is any of the perfumes that have been created by one of their prominent noses, all of them, even though they might be so diverse in what you get from them and the, and the notes that stand out, all of them have probably 10 to 30% of this DNA that they create. It might be 50 elements that they as chemists put together and it's a certain essence of how Guer Guerlain smells. And Chanel's the same way. So if you smell, let's say, 10 different bottles of Chanel perfumes that have been created over 100 years, you might get a real diversity in experience, but you're also going to get this essence and be like, that's Chanel. And I think that's one of the things that's so cool about um, Guerlain is it's got that Guerlainade. So it's got this essence, this beautiful, and often for Guerlain, it's this powdery, um, melancholy smell. So, um, and I just think it's so interesting because it's kind of a melancholy time for us right now, right? Um, so I would love to know, do, does anybody in your family have Guerlain perfumes, Shalimar, Lair Blue, anything that you know of? Um, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I would also love, if you're up for it, um, some homework that I find fun. There's this website called Fragrantica. So it's like Fragrant, F-R-A-G-R-A-N-T-I-C-A-A, C-A, Fragrantica. Um, if you look it up and put in the name of your favorite uh, cologne or perfume, 
it will list all of the different notes and essences or ingredients in the perfume and it'll give you a history. I would love to know if there's something wild or something unexpected in the composition. Um, you know, to, just to give you an idea, I was talking about how there's kind of like a funkiness to Lair Blue. Um, there's, you know, there are things that smell leathery in this, almost animalic. And you'll see, not necessarily in this perfume, but in some compositions, there are things like civet, which is like cat mm, fecal matter. I believe. Or um, ambergris used to be used in perfumes, which is like a whale matter. Um, there's some pretty funky things. And again, it just creates this like base or this depth to the perfume. So I would love to know if you explore your favorite. Is there something in there that you didn't expect? Um, thanks again for watching and feel free again to um, add any ideas for content if you have something that we want to explore together. Thanks a lot. Have a great night.